Welcome to our presentation. This is my joint work with Güçkan Yapar and Hanife Taylan Selamlar. Today I'll do my best to introduce ATA method, which is a, a new forecasting method that we proposed. First, I'll make a brief introduction to the existing literature and some data sets that are used for comparing existing forecasting methods. Then I'll try to give the general form of the proposed method and then talk about some of its properties on or, and more specialized versions of the method. Uh, then I'll give the empirical results comparing our method's performance to the existing forecasting approaches. Uh, finally, I'll summarize and give some concluding ideas. Making good predictions about the future is a very hard task because most of the time there is a lot of uncertainty involved and this is very important for almost all fields of science. When we say a good forecast, we mean that it should be accurate, simple to obtain, uh, it should be fully automatic because not all the users will be experts in time series modeling and also it should be fast to obtain because there will be a lot of data coming in so we have to keep keep up with the flow. All time series data can be thought of as consisting of four main components namely the trends, seasonal, cyclical and random components. Uh, the goal is to uh, effectively model each of these components so that we can obtain uh, an accurate forecast for the future. Uh, it's also worth noting that the proposed method will be applied to non-seasonal data or if the uh, data con contains a seasonal effect, we use the multiplicative classical decomposition first. Simple forecasting methods assume that the data follow a constant process so xt is assumed to oscillate around a constant level a with a random noise epsilon t which we also assume that has mean zero and constant variance sigma squared epsilon. The goal then is to obtain an estimate for the level which we usually accomplish by using a function of the observed data which generally has the form of t, uh, the summation t equals 1 to n wt x t. So each observation at time t receives a weight of wt. These wt's should be between 0 and 1. The weights must sum up to 1 and they should be increasing in order. Uh, depending on the weighting scheme, simple forecasting methods can be compared based on two popular metrics. The first one is the average age of the model, uh, which represents the model's um, effectiveness in utilizing fresh data. So the smaller the average age, the better. Uh, the second one is the variance of the estimate, which we, uh, as usual, want to be small. Uh, this can be calculated by the summation of the squared we weights, which we call V, times the constant variance. Simple exponential smoothing is undoubtedly the most popular simple forecasting technique used in practice. Uh, in this approach, ST, the smoothed value at time t is equal to alpha times xt, where xt is the actual observation at time t, plus 1 minus alpha times the previous smoothed value. Um, here we can obtain an estimate of the level uh, by simply using the latest smoothest, smoothed value. Uh, alpha is called the smoothing parameter and it's required to be between 0 and 1. When we apply the formula in the previous slide to successive observations recursively, uh, we can obtain the recursive form of simple exponential smoothing. Uh, here we can see that ST can be written as a weighted moving average of all past observations. And it's easier to see here that the weights decrease exponentially. And it's also worth noting that uh, 
the, the method requires an initial value which we denoted by S0 and its weight will, uh, will be very large for smaller values of alpha and uh, of course the weights of this technique uh, satisfy the required conditions of weights. We can obtain an unbiased estimate of the level using simple exponential smoothing and the average age of the model will be equal to 1 minus alpha over alpha and the variance of st will be equal to alpha over 2 minus alpha times sigma squared. Even though simple exponential smoothing is very popular, it suffers from a problem that has to do with the initial value that I mentioned before, especially when uh, alpha, the optimum smoothing parameter, is small and the time series is relatively short. Then what happens is you give most of the weight to the initial value, which is also an estimated value, uh, instead of giving that weight to your actual observations. So this makes the model very sensitive to the choice of uh, the initial value, the starting value. Uh, this is known as the initialization problem in the literature. Holt extended simple exponential smoothing idea to allow for modeling and forecasting of uh, data that also incorporate a trend component. Uh, here we have an additional smoothing parameter beta to smooth the trend component at time t. Uh, after we have st and tt, uh, then we can obtain the h step ahead forecast value as simply the level uh, st plus h times the trend, the latest trend component that we have. The trend component can also be incorporated into the model multiplicatively. So then we simply multiply the level and the trend to the power h to obtain the latest forecast value. To overcome the overtrending uh, phenomenon, dampening uh, trended methods were also uh, proposed. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but this is also possible. So to sum up, we can think about uh, 15 different exponential smoothing methods. Uh, so the trend component can be non-existing, additive, additive damped, multiplicative and multiplicative damped. And the seasonal component can also be non-existing, additive and multiplicative. Uh, this is a visualization of how each of these 15 methods would look. Heinemann and his colleagues suggested that the error can also be uh, added to the model uh, additively and, or multiplicatively. So they proposed the state space models for error trend and seasonal components, resulting in now 30 different exponential smoothing models. They also proposed ways to choose amongst these 30 models for each data set. Box Jenkins Zarima is another very popular forecasting technique uh, and there's always been a competition between exponential smoothing and Box Jenkins Zarima. This turned into an empirical competition between these methods and the new ones that were generated based on these methods. Uh, since the late 60s and the latest of these competitions was published uh, in the year 2000 named the M3 competition. In the famous M competitions, the time series data sets consist of pre-specified number of in-sample data points that we use for model building and parameter estimation and uh, a separate set of pre specified out sample data points that we use for comparing the accuracies of various models and testing the performance of these models. The latest one of these, the M3 competition, consists of 3003 time series data sets that are all positive, that have different time intervals, 
uh, different seasonality patterns and come from uh, various uh, sources. The series contained 20 to 140 observations, forecasting horizon, namely the number of out-sample data points for each data set is pre-specified, for example, this is 6 for all the yearly data, and 5 different accuracy measures are utilized. These accuracy measures are the scale-dependent mean absolute error, mean squared error, and the root mean squared error, and the scale-independent mean absolute percentage error, and the symmetric means uh, absolute percentage error. Another accuracy measure called the mean absolute scaled error was also proposed by Heidman and Kohler more recently. Uh, this metric allows for comparison of a, a proposed method to the naive method. The results from the M3 competition showed that simpler te techniques were usually better. Uh, the performance of the methods varied uh, according to the accuracy measure used, and combined forecasting was beneficial. Also, uh, they concluded that there is no best method, so the best method varied according to the forecasting horizon, the type of the data, and the category of the data. Now I'll start talking about ATA method, uh, which we proposed as an alternative to existing forecasting methods. First, I'll show the ATA PQ model, which has similar form to Holt's linear trend model. Uh, we also incorporate trend linearly here. The difference is instead of the usual alpha parameter, we have P over T for the most recent observation. And instead of the usual beta, we have Q over T for the most recent uh, trend component. Uh, this allows for more flexible modeling of the time series data, as I'll come back to later. Uh, our parameters are P and Q, uh, which can take on integer values from 1 to N and from 0 to P. Once these parameters are optimized, we do not need an initial value and the forecast value com can be obtained similar to uh, the Holtz linear trend model. When Q is set equal to zero, we can obtain the simple version of ATA method. Uh, this has similar form to the simple exponential smoothing. Similar to simple exponential smoothing, when we uh, apply the formula recursively to successive observations, we can obtain a recursive form of uh, ATA P0. When the weights of simple exponential smoothing and auto simple are compared, uh, the first difference that we can see is that uh, for auto simple, we assign the oldest p observations weights of zero, and if we assume that uh, the bo the two approaches uh, give similar weight to the most recent observation, uh, i.e. alpha is equal to p over n then we can see that auto simple will give greater weights to the recent observations and smaller weights to the older observations compared to simple exponential smoothing. The weights of auto simple will always be between 0 and 1 and they are increasing in order. And to see that the weights uh, sum up to 1, we have to realize that the weights of Atta simple are exactly the same as the probabilities from a negative hypergeometric distribution. So since the probabilities sum up to 1, the weights also sum up to 1. Utilizing this distribution, the average age of the model can be found easily uh, as n minus p over p plus 1. And if, again, the two approaches give similar weight to the most recent observation, then the average age of ATA is smaller than simple exponential smoothing. And since researchers prefer uh, fre fresh data, then uh, ATA has an advantage here. 
We also found the explicit form for the variance of our model. Uh, this involves the generalized hypergeometric series. So at the same alpha level, i.e. when the two uh, approaches give similar weight to the most recent observation, Atta has a smaller average age. And at the same average age, uh, Atta has smaller variance than exponential smoothing. So in both cases, it's preferable. Since in our model, SP is set equal to XD for all the time points before P, we do not need an initial value uh, to start off. Uh, and also, the initial value, i.e. the P observation in the series, receives a smaller weight compared to the simple exponential smoothing. It's easier to see in this figure, for example, for a series of size 20, after the third and the fourth iteration, uh, the weights of ATA uh, assigned to the initial value decrease faster, much faster than simple exponential smoothing and approaches zero around like the sixth, seventh iteration. And uh, ex for exponential smoothing, this takes a very long time. For simple exponential smoothing, the weights attached to observations do not change uh, depending on the sample size. So no matter how large a sample size you have at hand, the latest observation will always receive the weight alpha. However, for ATA, these are um, flexible and it depends on the amount of data at hand when you're smoothing how much the uh, latest observation will receive. So it's P over N. As N gets larger, this is going to decrease for the uh, same P parameter. Some special parameter values of ATA are worth talking about. For example, for P equals to 1, uh, the method is able to assign equal weights to all past observations. This cannot be achieved uh, by any other uh, exponential smoothing method. And in this case, the estimate for the level is simply equal to the sample average. For p equals 2, the weights start decreasing uh, as we go to the older observations. But here they decrease linearly with a certain slope and intercept. This also cannot be achieved with any other exponential smoothing method. For p greater than or equal to 3, Atta starts producing exponentially decreasing weights similar to the sim simple exponential smoothing, but not exactly the same. For example, for a sample of size 10, you can see that the re for recent observations, for example, x9, x8, Atta gives greater weights. And for the last three observations here, since p is equal to 3, uh, they, they will receive weights of zero. Here is a visualization of how the weights behave for p equals to 1, 2, and greater than or equal to 3. The values of the unknown parameters can easily be found using uh, any technique such as like minimizing the sum of squared errors, etc. Uh, and once the optimum smoothing parameters are found, no initial value needs to be found. So they are uh, obtained simultaneously. So there is no initialization problem for ATA. The main idea in simple exponential smoothing is to give the recent observations more weight. So intuitively, if you have n observations, uh, the weight you should give the last observation should not be smaller than 1 over n. Unfortunately, simple exponential smoothing violates this idea most of the times and gives the last observation weight smaller than 1 over n. With ATA, on the other hand, this is never possible because the smallest weight you can assign the la last observation is 1 over n. The version of ATA that I've talked about so far has additive trend in it. 
Similar to exponential smoothing, the trend can be modeled multiplicatively. Or to overcome the overtrending problem, again, a dampening parameter can be incorporated. Knowing the trend of a series without knowing the level of it does not give us much information. Therefore, when we are carrying out our optimization process, first we will always fix the trend parameter to zero and find the optimum level. And then at this optimum level, then we will search for an appropriate trend value. So first we deseasonalize the data if necessary. Then we obtain the uh, optimal value for the parameter P, which we denote by P star. Uh, by minimizing, uh, for example, the mean absolute one step ahead forecast errors in the in sample. Then at the optimal P star, we find an optimal value for the parameter Q. And then in the end, we produce re-seasonalized forecasts using these uh, estimated parameter values. When presenting the results from uh, the M3 competition for our model, I'll talk about uh, ATLA P0 which is an alternative to simple exponential smoothing. I'll mention ATA P1, which performs very well by itself. Uh, I'll talk about ATA P star Q as an alternative to Holt's linear trend method. Uh, I'll show results from ATA damped uh, as an alternative to the usual damped trend method. I'll talk about the combination of the simple hold and dampen version of our model. Uh, to the co combination of the simple hold and dampened exponential smoothing methods. And then I will talk about at a select where we perform a model selection between the models in uh, one and two based on the in sample symmetric mean absolute percentage errors. And finally, I will talk about at a comb. Uh, which is a combination, uh, actually it's just a simple average of the forecasts from the two models in 1 and 2. To obtain this table, the forecasting errors for the 3003 time series data uh, were averaged for the forecasting horizons 1 to 18. Uh, the accuracy metric used in this table is the symmetric mean absolute percentage error. And to compare the simple exponential smoothing method to other simple, we can simply look at the last column where the forecasting errors are averaged for all forecasting horizon, horizons 1 to 18. Uh, we can see that other simple produces a much smaller average forecasting error here. Similarly, when ATA P star Q is compared to Holt's linear trend model, we can see that the error from ATA is much smaller on average. When the dampened versions of the two approaches are compared, again on average, we can see that ATA produces a smaller forecasting error on average. The combinations of the single hold and dampened versions of the two models can also be compared. Here we can again see that ATA performs much better. We can think about ATA select as an alternative to the ETS models, but it's worth noting that even though they perform model selection amongst 30 different models, we just choose from two parameterizations of the same model. And despite this fact, you can see that on average, our errors are much, much smaller. It is also worth noting that just one uh, parameterization of our model, the ATA P1, is able to perform better than the naive single hold and winter models alone. And the combination that we used, uh, which was a simple average of uh, the two parameterizations of our model uh, can perform much better than uh, all of the uh, other approaches, especially ETS. Rule-based forecasting is also becoming very popular in this area. 
so in order to improve our model's uh, performance, we also introduce some simple rules uh, for model selection and combination. For example, for yearly data, we perform a model selection uh, between our simple uh, hold and dampened versions with the parameter value 1. When we apply these rules, uh, you can see that ATA outperforms all the other competitors in every individual forecasting horizon and both for long and short term averages. When we change the error metric to mean absolute scaled error, uh, the results do not change and ATA still f performs better than all the other competitors for each forecasting horizon and for the uh, short-term and long-term averages. When the models are compared for different types of da data, for example, the monthly data, quarterly data, yearly data, uh, you can still see that ATA performs uh, the best for each uh, type of time series data. Again, for different time intervals, uh, when we switch to mean absolute scaled error, the results do not change. We agree with the results from the M3 competition uh, that complexity harms accuracy because our method is such a simple method and it was still able to outperform its very complex and involved uh, competitors. Uh, we also agree that the combination of individual methods is definitely beneficial, but also combination of dip different parameterizations may increase accuracy. However, we contradict with the result that the performance of the methods was dependent on the accuracy measure, uh, because a task performance, as you can see, does not depend on the accuracy measure being used. Uh, to summarize, we would like to say that it is possible to give a forecasting method that can consistently provide good forecasts in every forecasting setting. And we would like to underline that these results can be improved by using uh, different outlier detection algorithms, transformations, or incorporating different types of error terms into our models. We have a web page as given in this slide. Uh, you can go there to find the tables given in this presentation. And we have R code and Excel uh, macro to help you do our calculations. Here are some of the references that we used. More references. We have published two papers recently concerning this uh, new method, so you can read them for more information. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to contact us. Thanks!